So you're the proud owner of a vintage 1984 or 85 Macintosh, only to find that this happens. You either can't insert the disc all the way in, or you can insert it, but it won't drop down. Let's fix it. The first thing we need to do is unscrew the back. We need a Torx T15 screwdriver in order to remove them. Uh, we also need to make sure that the neck is long. This is about 24 centimeters or just under 10 inches long, which while not necessary for these is important because we will have to remove the screws in the handle. And they're very easy to remove. Open the battery door and remove this screw inside. And lastly, we need to remove the screws that are deep in the handle. Absolutely do not forget to remove the programmer switch before you remove the back case. Otherwise, you will damage the programmer switch. It's now necessary to remove the back case. If you are on a soft surface or on a bed, sometimes you can grab the machine and shake it in order to pull off the back. But I have a couple stainless steel Mac Cracker pry tools that will allow me to fit these into the groove, just opening it a little bit at various points. That should give me just enough opening that I need to remove it. Although this is the floppy drive and this is the only thing we're going to be touching, it's best to discharge the CRT, especially because many of the old power supply analog boards did not have a newer flyback transformer like this, which bleeds off the high voltage over time. This is a Macintosh Plus replacement power supply within this older Macintosh, and it is therefore much safer than the original. You most likely have an original, and therefore it's best to discharge the CRT, simply using an alligator clip wire and a flathead screwdriver. One alligator clip needs to go onto the lug nut, as shown here, don't connect it anywhere else, connect it definitely here. And then we slip our screwdriver under the suction cup. Some people say to move your hand behind your back, but actually <laughs> you need both hands. Just make sure that you don't uh, touch anything here. And of course you have your screwdriver insulated so that uh, only the metal is exposed. And what we're going to do is fit the screwdriver in until we hear a pop, and it may not pop in your case. And we can actually remove the connector here. It did not pop in my case because this has already bled off the residual high voltage. By the way, you definitely want to make sure that your machine has its power cord disconnected when you discharge the CRT like this. You can now safely remove the motherboard. There's just a little um, metal shield on here that can come right off. And then there's these two cables. This is just a floppy drive ribbon cable, very carefully rotated and pull it out. And then we have the power cable here. Again, you wanna just rock it uh, back and forth very carefully until it comes out. And now it is a matter of sliding our motherboard up. Note that there's two hooks here. And we're going to... You can see the rails on both sides. Carefully pick it up and out. And we have four screws to remove with a Phillips head plus screwdriver. Okay. 
Now the screws are removed. And it's just a matter of pulling it right out. We now need to remove the mechanism by removing yet another four Phillips head screwdriver screws. Slightly loosen that one. And the mechanism slides out. And we can see the actual date on it, January 1984, one of the very first floppy disk drives, 400K single-sided. And on the opposite side, it gives us the model OA-D34V. At the back of the drive near the ribbon cable, there is a flathead screw that needs to be removed so that we can remove this shield. And just noting that when we remove this shield, this little piece that sticks out needs to come back inside this groove. And up here, there's a little piece that sticks out that goes under this little hook. To show you all of the moving parts, I have a floppy disk here that I'm going to insert and eject and insert and eject. So we see that in these locations, this is sliding back and forth. And so if yours does not move, we need to have a swab and alcohol to clean in this area. So I put some 100% iso alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. Here in Japan, we have 100%. You probably would have access to 99 although you could use 70, it's probably best to use the 99 or 100. Put that on your swab, then you're going to put that in these crevices. And when you twist and you clean, you will notice that the color of your Q-tip, if it's white, should change color because that's a sign that you are removing some of the gooey gunk that is uh, frozen up and causing your floppy drive not to move well. So what, this is what you want to do is to be able to put your disc in and push it out to see all of the places that you will need to clean. You should also check the top side. So you can see this part is moving. And in your case, it may be locked up, in which case you want to have some alcohol to remove any residual grease or goo that may be in this area. Make sure you don't swab your floppy disk. Now 
And this little thing here, the black thing, is a pressure pad. You don't want to clean that, but you can, with alcohol, clean uh, the head. Here is the head here. You can put a little alcohol. Again, I recommend 99 or 100% alcohol, and you can clean that head with your swab. Um, not too hard to just uh, clean off any gunk that may be on him. And if need be, you can also put alcohol on this little bar here, assuming yours, I have another floppy drive where uh, if I let go, it will slowly, slowly come down, and it should come down just like this one right away. So if yours is slowly moving, chances are it has some uh, grease, very old grease on it that needs to be swabbed away with alcohol. Now it's time to lube the drive, and I recommend silicon grease as opposed to lithium grease because lithium grease is really made for high temperature applications even though the there is no fan in the early max they're not technically high temperature this will run fairly cool it is a metal body uh, you'll get more longevity out of silicon grease and the lithium grease will damage plastic parts over time or rubber parts, whereas silicon grease will not. Now there's nothing special about this. It's just a white silicon grease. You can use a different brand, of course, and you could even use uh, some silicon oil instead. However, the benefit of grease is it doesn't drip. So I would suggest the grease over an oil that could drip inside and get on other parts. And we're going to apply it only on this side here uh, on the areas that we saw that moved. So just apply some silicon grease to your swab and you can put it in those areas that are going to be moving around. And you can test that again by putting your floppy in there. And that should be sufficient. You do not need to put grease here, and the reason why is because, as you can see, this piece of metal, even though it is moving, 
it doesn't make a lot of direct contact with this yellowish colored metal beneath. It's not pushing down hard, unlike the parts on the side, which is really why I grease them. So if you're doing this job and you don't have the right oil and grease, I would say if you can't use the right grease that I recommend, it's probably best just to leave it dry. But it's not good for the long-term usability of the drive to leave those uh, parts on the side completely dry because the metal will wear down over time. And so that's why I say grease the side. But here, you definitely don't want to put liquid here because that's where the head is, that's where your floppy is. And even grease, I would say, you don't want to risk it getting in the disc. So don't put anything up, up here. There's one other thing I wish to show you and point out is this little spiral part right here. That is where the head rotates and if you were to apply grease to something this might be good especially if the head is not moving. However, you have to be careful if you do if you apply grease in this manner because the head is very close there and you don't want to get any oil or grease on that head. Uh, in many cases it's best to unscrew this top portion and then apply the grease. But in my case, I'm not going to apply grease to it because the head movement was fine. I'm just saying that in your case, you may need to apply uh, some silicone grease around this area as well. And now we reassemble and then test. We need to put back on our little thing here. Remember this little guy goes underneath, not this one, but underneath the little one over here. And there's this little arm that has to go under here. Just like so. Then we have to put back our screw over here. When putting the drive back in the sled, try not to get your hands over here. You don't want to touch this and get your hands all gunkied up there. Uh, also remember that we need to put the drive in with the circuit board up. Okay. And the ribbon cable is facing this way, which is opposite this, this uh, you can see there's a gap here the ribbon cable must go in that way. Now you will need to, you can start with any of the four screws, but when you put the screw in, you will need to lift the drive up slightly in order to get the screw to fit in the right hole. And I'm not tightening them down with all of my might yet because um, we should just loosely put in, you can put them in any order you wish, but don't tighten, like for example, if you put two on this side, don't tighten those because you need to be able to move the drive a little bit. And I tighten them firmly, but not with all my might. And when putting back in these four screws, you may need to lift up on the drive just ever so slightly to get the screw to fit in the hole. I'm not tightening with it all, all my might, I'm just getting it loosely in there and get the caddy corner okay. 
And now we can tighten them. Next we put back in the motherboard. Notice I have it in an anti-static bag. I also suggest that you use an anti-static wristband to a grounded outlet to make sure you are not going to zap anything. Some of these early boards are quite sensitive to static electricity, so you need to be very careful about that. And also be very careful when sliding it down. It's not too difficult. Make sure your two tabs go into the frame. Now I want to replace the floppy connector. You can see that there into this matching connector here. Which is very easy. Connect the power cable. It is keyed, which means it'll only go in one way. Make sure it's pushed down well. It's not difficult. Now I want to replace the flyback transformer cup and notice that there are these two pins here. So you're going to have to put in one and then use a flathead screwdriver to push in the other. There's no fear here because we've already discharged it. I'm putting in one. Just turn it a little bit and try to see if you can twist it out. You shouldn't be able to pull out. And we can now put the case back on. Be very careful. You're probably not going to break the case, but don't use force. Make sure it's going to go down in there on both sides. So check it on both sides when you're pushing down the case. It should slide in there. If it doesn't, it means something could be in the way. You might need to lift it up and push it down again. And if I put my fingers all the way around, I can see there's very little gap there. And because we haven't tested it yet, we're not going to push it down hard. The reason I didn't have you test the bare drive outside the Mac is because of short-circuiting concerns. This is really the safest way to do it. So I have the mouse plugged in, no keyboard, we don't need one, and we will do what's called the smoke test. <laughs> if you did something seriously wrong, there will be smoke when you turn it on, but we should hear the familiar bong when I switch it on. And I do, and we should also be able to see something on the screen, and we do. So that means we put it back together correctly. Now it's a matter of testing our floppy. The disc went in, it was able to boot, which is showing the head is good, and now we'll test the eject mechanism. And there we go, it ejects just fine. We'll just for good measure push it back in. It works great. Try ejecting again. Fixed. It's now a matter of just pushing down the case to make sure it's secure. You don't want a gap around it. Make sure it's pushed down all the way. And then you can start putting in your Torx screws. Don't screw them down too firm. Just loosely put each of them in. And remember that there are five of them because one of them goes just above the PRAM battery. and then the two in the handle. Then put your PRAM battery door back in. By the way, make sure your battery is new. Don't leave it in there for more than five years or so. You can still find some of these if you're in the USA on Amazon. 
if you leave it in there too long, it will leak and that will mess up your computer because that will flow down over the power switch area. You don't want that. So I just want to mention that. Just want to show you now where the programmer switch, if you have one, uh, attaches. You can see the two buttons right behind the plastic slits. And when you install the programmer switch, you want to make sure that the interrupt and reset words are facing up and readable. And that is your orientation. And then you are going to put them not in the bottom slit, not in this one, but right above the buttons are where you're going to push that in there. And don't force it in. Remember, this is old plastic. And that's how it goes on. And you can sort of hear the buttons being pushed. And just to let you know, directly below the Apple logo, we have the screen brightness uh, rotary dial. So if your screen is dark and you're worried, it could be turned all the way down. Uh, by the way, it says that uh, the four means here 1984 was the, the year of manufacture. The six means the sixth week. So even though the floppy drive was manufactured in January of that same year, this was made a few weeks later. But uh, of course, we've you saw the power supply was upgraded in this, and uh, but the floppy drive is clearly the oldest component of anything that's marked in this computer. And there you have it, folks. That's all there is to it. I realize that this video doesn't cover every possible problem that could go wrong with these early 400K 1984 floppy drives, but. By far, what you've seen in this video is what plagues the vast majority of them. It really is as simple as frozen up grease that you just have to remove uh, with a little bit of alcohol. And uh, I would suggest you put on a little bit of silicone grease to keep the, the parts from rubbing too hard against each other and wearing down over time. And I hope this gets you up and running. So thank you for watching. As I conclude, I would like to say a special shout out and sincere thank you to Alex Santos, who contributed uh, via PayPal to this channel. And uh, he also gave me a lot of excellent uh, pieces of advice personally. And I sincerely appreciate that, Alex. And I take your contribution to heart. Um, by the way, Alex is the first person who has contributed uh, to this channel in that way, and so his contribution is very special indeed. For the rest of you, if you'd like to support this channel uh, in a way that costs you nothing, but maybe a few seconds, uh, please consider clicking the thumbs up button on YouTube, and also subscribing to this channel because I have more videos coming. Your thumbs ups and subscribes tell me that I've done something right. And if you'd like to uh, go the extra mile like Alex did and contribute to this uh, site in another way, you can find more details on that in the text description underneath this video on YouTube. Thank you to one and all for watching. Have a great day.